Hello, and welcome to chapter six, section, section two, part one. Um, today we're looking at volumes of a solid of revolution. So there's a lot of words there. First of all, volume. So now we're no longer looking at area, we're looking at volume. So if you remember like, you know, from geometry, we're finding like how much like space a shape would take up. Um, and then a solid of revolution means we're creating this solid by doing revolutions. So like if you think about it like rotations. So I've included some pictures here so that it could help you out. So this is what we're used to seeing, right? We have some graph f of x and then we've been using this to find areas. So like area under the curve, which was just an integral. And so um, in the past, what we've done is like use little rectangles or whatever to estimate that area. Um, but then integrals was like the most accurate way to find that area underneath this curve. So what we're going to do is then to create this solid of revolution, this curve right here for the f of x equation, we're going to rotate that. So if you can kind of imagine it like rotating around the x axis, and then it'll create this little like cone shape thing, almost. Um, and so this 3D shape is what we're trying to find the volume of. And in order to do that, in the past where we like took out a little rectangle, found the area of that rectangle, and then added up all the rectangles. Instead, if you can imagine this volume of this solid, if we kind of cut it like a slice or like a instead of a rectangle, we would take a slice of it. When you slice it, the cross section ends up being a circle. So if you imagine like a cone and you cut the cone through, you would get a little circle in it. And so this circle, if we find the area of that circle and then, you know, imagine you sliced it a bunch of times. So you have a bunch of circles added all the areas of those circles together. That would give you the total volume. So that's kind of the summary of how to find the volume of a solid of revolution. Um, let's do some examples so that we can kind of see and like I'll have more pictures so you can kind of um, visualize this a little bit better. All right, so for this first example, we're going to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals square root of sine x and the line y equals zero around the x-axis on the interval from zero to pi. Okay, so there's a lot of information here. So basically, we're looking at this graph, f of x equals square root of sine x, and then we're using the line y equals zero, which is just the x-axis, so like right here. And so we're using that shaded region, but then we're revolving it around the x-axis. So you can see my little picture here. Um, I have arrows where we're actually rotating this. So if we rotated this around and around, um, then we would get a shape that ends up like this, kind of like this egg shape. Um, and I tried to find a 3D picture, so this is the best I got. Um, but if you can imagine, it's kind of like an egg shape uh, around the x-axis. So as we were saying before, we would find the volume of this by kind of like slicing this up. And when we slice this, um, so if you can imagine um, us making a slice like right here, it would make a little circle when we actually cut it off. Um, but that slice itself, like um, if we imagine like a really, really thin slice, and I just did that a bajillion times, found the area or like the volume of that really thin slice throughout this entire um, egg shape, then we'd be able to add up all those volumes to find the total volume. So really, I'm looking for the each slice, the area of each circle, because when I slice this, it's going to make a circle. And if I can find the area of that circle and then integrate the area of that circle throughout my x values from 0, so over here, all the way to pi, then I would get the total volume. So that's kind of my plan of action here. So um, we know for our integral, it's going to go from 0 to pi. And then because I'm trying to find that area of the circle, the formula for an area of a circle is pi r squared. I'm going to write this as pi r squared, where the capital R stands for the radius. But for our shape here, it's an egg shape. So that radius, um, when we cut open our cross sections to get that circle. The radius goes from like, this is hard to draw. I'll try to do it in a different color. 
here's the center, and then the radius would go up to there to make that circle. Oh my gosh. 3D drawings are really difficult. I don't know if you've ever noticed. Okay, so there's my circle. The radius would go from like where the x-axis is all the way to the top, which is basically the height of that graph. So the height or the radius would be y equals the square root of sine x because that's like the distance from, you know, the, the graph to the top of the curve. So that would become my radius. Um, because, and it's awkward because that radius constantly changes throughout the shape. So like if a, my x value was different over here, I'd have a different radius. And that's why our radius has to be some sort of function. So my setup now looks like an integral from 0 to pi, pi, and then r would be the square root of sine x squared dx. So in general, this is like the general formula in for any equation um, where your endpoints are different, obviously. But for us, in this particular problem, we're going from 0 to pi, and then our radius is considered to be square root of sine x. Um, so solving this out, this comes out pretty nicely because the square root of sine x squared is just sine x dx. And then I'm also going to put that pi in front because it's just a constant just to make things nicer for ourselves. And then the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. So remember, you're trying to think of like, what can I take the derivative of to get sine x? And then we're going from 0 to pi, so we can plug that in. So we're taking pi, and that gets multiplied to negative cosine of pi, minus negative cosine of zero. And then negative cosine of pi would be negative of a negative one minus negative cosine of zero is negative one. So I end up with two pi because this quantity here is going to be 2 times pi, 2 pi. So we're saying this total volume then is 2 pi units cubed. All right, let's try another similar example. So this time we are looking for the volume um, that's found by revolving the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 and the x-axis about the x-axis. So again, we're rotating around the x-axis just like we did before. But then um, we're just, look, um, our shaded area is like here. So the equation we're given is an equation of a parabola. Um, and then we're bounding that with the x-axis again. So if we rotate this part around the x-axis, if you can kind of imagine it, I am no good at 3D drawings here, but we're going to attempt. Um, if you rotate this, it ends up like, if you imagine it like flipping over itself, you end up kind of like this, and then you get this, like, not like an egg shape, I don't even know, football shape kind of. You would end up with kind of a football shape. So if you can imagine that, we're still, you know, finding the areas of circles because when we cut this football shape in half, like the little cross section, when you open it up, it'll still be that circle. So again, we're going to have an integral where we're dealing with pi r squared, where r is that distance, the radius distance. So like from um, any point on the center of our little football shape up until like the edge, the curve of the football. So that would be our radius, which is really the equation y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. Um, and then the x values where we're starting and ending that integration is going to be where it like 
starts and ends, where our shaded region starts and ends. So according to this graph, it'd be from one to three. And if you didn't have the graph, then you can certainly graph it out or you can solve for X um, by setting your equation equal to zero because that's where it would meet the X axis. So we are going from one to three where R is negative X squared plus four X minus three squared. Okay, so again, I'm going to move that pi out front because it's just a constant, so I don't have to deal with that until later. And then squaring this out, so since I can't use like, I don't know, it, I can't use power rule until I actually square this out. So this is my way of squaring things out. I just use a box to multiply everything. And this is what I got, x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 22x squared minus 24x plus 9. And then we can integrate this using the power rule. All right, so integrating by using the power rule and then kind of just simplifying it down, I end up with this. Now I get to plug in my 3 and my 1 and then solve from there. All right, long story short, I got 16 over 15 pi after plugging in my 3, plugging in the 1, and then subtracting. All right, this time our example is going to be a little bit different because we're not lo no longer going to be revolving around the x-axis. This time we're going to revolve around like a line, a different line. So here we're trying to find the volume of a solid form by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equals 2 minus x squared and g of x equals 1 about the line y equals 1. So this is where we're revolving around. And so here's the graph. So I've got 2 minus x squared. That's just an upside down parabola. The line g of x equals 1 is just like y equals 1 is just a horizontal line right here. And that's also where we're rotating. So our shape is still kind of like the football shape that we had before, but it's like not around the x axis. Instead, it's like just, you know, shifted up a little bit. So now what we're trying to do is basically um, to find this shaded region like how we did before when we had um, the area of a shaded uh, region bound by like two lines or two curves um, we would have the top curve minus the bottom curve in order to find that shaded region so it's going to be a similar concept here because when we find our radius when we do our pi r squared this yellow region right here um, that's basically you know the radius that we're trying to find but if I just said that the radius was going to be 2 minus x squared, because that's the equation of my parabola, that's actually the height from the curve all the way down to the x-axis. So we don't want all that. We only want the radius to be up until like here, that section. So instead, what I'm going to do for the radius is take that, um, top curve, which was 2 minus x squared, and subtract the bottom curve, which was 1, the y equals 1, or the g of x equals 1. Because then subtracting that amount, that'll give me just that little section within the shaded region that I want. So now my radius is going to be negative x squared plus 1, if I combine my like terms together. So, if you're ever not rotating around the x-axis, you're going to have to do some subtraction of the top curve minus the bottom curve. Okay, so now we can set up our integral to be from, um, I guess from the graph, we can see that the shaded region starts at negative 1, ends at 1. So we'll go from negative 1 to 1 of pi r squared, which will be, I'll move the pi out front, of negative x squared plus 1 squared because that's my radius now. So squaring that out I end up with x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1 and then I can integrate to get x to the 5 over 5 minus 2 times x cubed over 3 plus x from negative 1 to 1. And then plug in and simplify I end up with 16 over 15 pi. All right, last example. So this time we are looking to find the so, um, volume of the solid form by revolving the region bounded by the graph f of x equals square root of 16 minus x squared and the x and y axes about the y axis. So this time we're revolving around 
the y-axis instead. So anytime you're revolving around the y-axis, it's actually easier to deal with everything in terms of y. Because if you think about our uh, rotation, if we're revolving around the y-axis, this shape will end up coming out over here and kind of then making this into like a semi sphere, like half circle, but sphere. Um, so like an upside down bowl shape, if you want to think about it like that. Um, so in that case, it's kind of easier to do your integral from the y values of zero up until the y value of four this way instead of going from negative four all the way to positive four on the x-axis, because then when you like cut out your cross sections, they're not gonna be circles. If you can kind of imagine that, they're gonna be like half circles and that's just annoying to find the areas of. Versus if I had made slices horizontally, then they still come out as circles. So imagine like you're trying to cut a bowl um, horizontally. Um, you'll still end up with circles. So being in terms of y then, um, we actually want our to switch our variables around because currently our equation is y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared. Well, if I set it equal to x instead, then I can use that equation as my radius going horizontally this way. And so um, to solve for x, I'm going to square both sides and then I can actually I'll add x squared and subtract y squared just to make it look nicer and then square root both sides but then since I really only need just like this right side of the curve I don't need both sides of this um, I'm just going to use the positive version instead of both the plus and the negative. And then there's my radius now. So pi r squared, this time it'll be dy instead of dx since we're in terms of y. And then simplifying this out, oh, obviously I can move the pi out front. And then integrating the 16 minus y squared, I get 16, oops, 16y minus y cubed over 3 from 0 to 4. And I end up with 128 over 3 pi. Alrighty, that's it. I, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully you've gotten all the different situations where you'd have to revolve and find volumes. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. Bye.